Hi, and welcome to the show. I'm so excited for this edition of The Right Stuff. We are going to have such a fantastic time. We are talking talking to Shoba Sattler all the way from Australia about her works, her books, and her writings, and her life. Coming up next, right here on The Right Stuff. You are listening to the best, the only, the only place to be on Tuesday night. That's right. You're listening to The Right Stuff. And you're at the right place at the right time. From England to Canada, from Detroit to the Coconos, we are showcasing Christian authors worldwide, giving you tips, tools, techniques, and resources for you, the writer, to hone and perfect your craft. Tune in every Tuesday at 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time right here on WPJC 104.5. And your host, Parker J. Cole. Hi, and welcome to this edition of The Right Stuff. I am so glad you are here with me today. We are talking to a fellow author all the way from Australia, Shoba Sattler, and I can't wait to have a great discussion with her. One thing that I love about doing The Right Stuff is meeting authors from all across the world. And don't I always say showcasing Christian authors from all over the world, worldwide? That's what I'm all about, because all over the world, we are supposed to go out into all the world and preach the gospel, whether we do it through the pulpit or through our writings or through our music or our art, we are supposed to reach the world. And I'm so, so thankful that God has given me the ability and the platform to showcase Christian authors worldwide. This is a pre-recorded uh, interview today, so we won't be taking any questions or calls from our callers and supporters, but you're going to definitely love this interview with Shoba coming up next in just a few moments. We're going to take a quick short break and we'll be right back after these messages. Don't go anywhere. More with Parker and her guests on the Right Stuff Radio Show. We'll be right back. Question. If you write a book, everybody will rush out to buy it. Obvious answer, no. If you were a celebrity or if you had a huge marketing budget, then maybe you can get a lot of exposure for your book. Another solution would be to check out joeytweets.com. JoeyTweets.com is a promotion and marketing service with access to over one-third of a million followers on Twitter. JoeyTweets.com has three packages available to fit any budget. That's J-O-E-Y-T-W-E-E-T-S.com. JoeyTweets.com. Get some serious exposure for your books. Authors, are you looking for a new way to get your book in the hands of new audience, of targeted buyers? Then a virtual book tour is for you. Right now, Virtual Book Tours is an excellent opportunity for you to introduce your book and who you are as an author. Launching your book is very important. A virtual book tour will connect you with readers. We at WNL, we specialize in book tours, book blasts, radio tours, cover reveals, and Facebook chat. Promoting and marketing your book is what we do. Online publicity, the exposure and the publicity is what you need. Let us help you reach new readers and a new audience. We take care of everything so you don't have to. We set up the tour for you. We connect you with bloggers to advertise your book by way of interviews, guest posts, and reviews. If you are an author of a newly published book, have an upcoming release, or just want to give a previously published book new life, a virtual book tour is your answer. Check our tours out at www.wnlbooktours.com. Visit me on Facebook. I am the owner, Paulette Harper. Hi, and welcome back to the show. You're listening to The Right Stuff here on WPJC 104.5, part of the fabulous PJC Media Network. I'm so glad you are here with me. Like I said before the break, this is a pre-recorded interview. We'll be talking to Shoba Sattler all the way from Australia. And without further ado, we're going to introduce Shoba. Shoba, how are you doing today? Hello, Parker. I'm doing fine. Thank you for having me. And thank you so much for taking time out of your very busy schedule to be with us on the show. I am so, so excited to uh, be with you here because uh, it's just great to talk to someone from Australia. And I already know it's tomorrow (laughs) where you are while it's today where I am. And I just think that's so fascinating. So thank you for being with us and uh, really looking forward to unpacking who Shoba Sattler really is. You say, I wonder who she is, right? So go ahead and tell us who you are in your own words. 
Sure. Okay. Um, well, I've been writing for well, for, for a long time now. It's been nearly 30 years. I've been writing since I was a child in um, primary school. I'd write for win essay competitions. I'd write for the newspapers. And uh, prior to writing books, I ran a Christian magazine called Agape in Malaysia. Mm -hmm. And I ran that for seven years, and I also wrote for the Circular Press, but mainly I'm an inspirational writer. I write um, either with a Christian theme, or it would be sort of, uh, if you can imagine a Hallmark movie, it would be more like that, stories uh -huh. of that nature. Mm -hmm. So um, that's about my writing life, so if as as far as what I'm doing here in Australia, I live on a farm, and uh, my husband and I we worship. Uh, we sorry, we play music in church. Um, and really, it's quite a laid-back lifestyle <laughs> over here. Quite different from Asia, where everything is like on the go. Mm -hmm. So um, it's good. Yes. <laughs> I like that you say you live on a farm. You're you're the second author I've had that lives on a farm, and I just find that so fascinating because I thought I was a country girl. Like I thought because I like to read about you know the quiet life and country that I was a country girl. But when I actually went to a farm at my aunt's house, I was ready to go. I felt like I was so isolated from everything around me, <laughs> and I said, I guess I'm not a country girl. So I just find that fascinating. And do you find that being and living on the farm does give you that ability and that calm atmosphere or even that just free atmosphere to go ahead and write without interruption? Uh, yes. Um, I was going to laugh there when you say without interruption. There could be any <laughs> crazy thing happening as well here yeah, with the animals and, uh, you know, you, you just can't work on a sh schedule. But yeah. um, the thing is, it is, it is very calming. In fact, uh, you may laugh, but I actually get my inspiration when I'm shoveling horse goo. So, of course. <laughs> could be inspiration <laughs> for it. <laughs> uh, it may sound weird, but it's mundane tasks like that that actually gets the juices going, the creative juices going. And, uh, yeah, well, it, it, you know, you're grounded. You're sort of um, cut off from, I'm not, I'm not saying reality, but it just helps you process things better in your mind. So, yeah. I like that, <laughs> Good. actually. I like that because a lot of sometimes mundane t mundane task actually do actually does do that. Sometimes I get some of the ideas and I'm walking my dog or even just driving to go to the store. Sometimes when you're driving, you can get like a huge inspiration, maybe because you're not thinking about it. But if you're in front of your computer or wherever uh, you use to get your flow going, and you can't think of anything, you know, and then all of a sudden you're walking down the street, you know, carrying bottles to the store or whatever, <laughs> and then you get all these great yeah. ideas coming out of everywhere. There must be something to that, you know, Shoba? Yes, you absolutely. Know, I didn't get what you're saying. And what I really like about, um, you know, listening to you is that, you know, you say how you have such a huge uh, experience writing, been writing since you were a child. I totally understand that. And you said that you're more of an inspirational writer, like a Hallmark movie, um, like Hallmark movies. And Hallmark movies are very squeaky clean. And we're well, not always squeaky clean as in they don't deal into reality, but they are pretty squeaky clean about a lot of different things. And so have you any inspirations of um, talking to Hallmark and trying to get one of your books into a movie? Um, it's interesting that you should say that, Parker, because my books are not squeaky clean. Mm -hmm. I'm more of an edgier Christian fiction writer, and this is the reason why you know I've been uh, I've been writing for so long, but as books per se, I actually stopped writing about uh, what was it ten years ago uh, after mm -hmm. two books I had published with traditional publishers, and that's also after a long time of trying to find uh, publishers who could get what I'm doing because mm -hmm. uh, I, I've been, I've, I've heard some of your interviews and I know like some of the authors are saying that it's such a such a problem trying to fit into the circular world, uh, market and then trying to fit into the Christian market and you're not wanted in either places because your mm -hmm. work is either too, uh, what, um, too daring for a Christian market, and then for the secular market, it's too Christian. So we don't fit in in either of these places. So maybe the market's more open now, and it's um, more accepting of the kind of writing that I do. 
but where back then it was just uh, too difficult, and I guess maybe I was just uh, more easily discouraged then. So, um, but now um, you know, I actually had an encounter with a, um, a fan. She calls herself. <laughs> she tracked me down on Facebook, and then she started talking about my first novel. And she talked about all the characters and, and their names, and I, I was just blown away that she would just remember all of these people in my book, like they were. <laughs> and um, yeah, and then I think the ultimate compliment she paid me was she just asked me, I really had to track you down to ask you if this story was real. And I said, no, <laughs> it's obviously it's fiction. <laughs> but the fact that, you know, someone could, like, uh, at least think about it might be real. So that made me wonder that uh, maybe I I did hear right from God, you know. <laughs> like back mm-hmm. then I had this issue like, did I hear from God or was it, is it just me? You know, I'm sure other people can relate to this. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. Yeah, so I, so now I, I realize that, you know, I've, I've always loved writing and it just comes quite easily to me and to create all of these stories off the top of my head and, um, so um, coming back to what you asked about Hallmark, so I don't think I would fit into that, really. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but circular-wise, uh, yeah, maybe, you know, if there was a market for something like that, it's just like Child of Dust, which I've come up with recently, that I've had a couple of reviews that said that they could see it as a movie, so yeah, you know. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that at all. And, you know, I totally resonate with a lot of things you were saying about the Christian market being so conservative. But now I think that is kind of changing now. I remember reading an article rather recently from one of the bigger agents within the conservative mainstream Christian publishing industry, and he said CBA was constantly was going to change. He said the days are gone where you could sell 100,000 copies of an Amish book because readers are looking for that more realistic tinge to Christian fiction. And he was talking about how it's going to change forever, like it's not going to be the same as what as it was because, you know, so many people within the Christian um, faith, they have so many problems. And I think they want to see the reality reflected in their fiction. It's almost as if the fiction is, changing to meet the needs of those of us who actually live in the reality, <laughs> that live in the reality of the world. Like we have problems. It, uh, it doesn't always go away because you have faith. Sometimes you struggle with your faith. Sometimes you have horrible things happen yeah. to you. And so people are looking for that fiction to kind of reflect it because they may want to get answers. They may not want to, and I hate to say this because we should all be reading our Bibles, but they may not want to read the Bible to get it. And I hate to say it like that because we should all be very much aware of what's going on in the word, but they may want to get it from a different source and then get encouragement that way. Sometimes you tend to relate a little more differently than other people because of many different things. I'm not saying that it's right, but that's the way it is, you know. And so I really appreciate you saying that how, you know, back then it didn't fit either or. You couldn't get, it was too daring for the Christian market, too soft or too Christian for the secular market. Like, where do I fit at? Where are you going to put me at? You know, I like that. So go ahead and tell us um, a little bit more about um, your book, Child of Dust. I want to know some more about Child of Dust. Tell us a little bit about that. Sure. Um, Child of Dust is based in Vietnam. So um, I have the backdrop that's Vietnam, and then this is a, a love story between um, a Vietnamese socialite, and she falls in love with her admiration chauffeur, so mm-hmm. for those who don't know, Amerikans are uh, children, the children that had been left behind by the American GIs when they pulled out of Vietnam after the war, after the Vietnam mm-hmm. War. Mm-hmm. So some of these kids, they grew up as three children. So um, of so Brian, that is the uh, main character, and the, the chauffeur that Kim, the Vietnamese socialite, falls in love with, he grew up as an Amerikan kid. So that is um, that goes towards a lot towards how his character is formed, you know, you know how uh, and all the insecurities and um, whatever and the strengths even that make up who he is, and and she being a sport brat, you know, with her privileged life and studying in France. So there's just this 
total contrast and then how the walls break down and and eventually you know don't want to give too much of the book away so oh, no. <laughs> yeah no, you will <laughs> so um yeah that's uh, and in the midst of it all you know you get an insight into Viet- Vietnamese life and uh, what it's like because they have a shop you know and um so it's all it's all part of the story and this one thing I um you know, when I, I used to, because uh, we all read romance novels, and I'm sure you write wonderful romance novels as well. Mm-hmm. And uh, the thing is, I I just kind of like to add a lot more to it. There's like the suspense and the twists, and you know, and there's, there's we also I also talk about like how um, how how it's not so it's a society that's not very free towards Christianity. So you. Mm-hmm. You don't really. You're not able to worship openly as as some people would, as we could do here in Australia, for example, or you in America. So mm-hmm. um, yeah, so those things are you know just touched on at the background. So we see their lives like intertwined between all of these things going on, and and um, that's what the story is about. Well, that's why I like about the idea about child of dust because I did a. Uh, article recently, probably last year sometime, it was talking about ra- uh, race, racism or race and Christian fiction, not racism, but race and Christian fiction. And I talked about how, you know, especially within the U.S., there is this very cut, cookie cutter type of mainstream Christian fiction. And then we have interracial and multicultural. They have different takes on things. Like you're talking about an area in Vietnam where you don't have that freedom to express your faith. And so how can people who love the Lord express their faith when they're confined? I remember I had another guest from Pakistan. She talked about how you can't um, say anything. You got to be careful what you say. If you're wrong, you can get into serious trouble. And, you you know, you can't say anything crit- critique-wise or anything because it's in a mostly Islamic culture, you know. And so how does a person who is a Christian, how can they express their faith and still be faithful and not get hurt, not be persecuted, not uh, be, you know, ostracized by those around them? And how can they still share the gospel? We still have that command. So I really like that you put that subtle backdrop behind it because I think that's important. Of course, with Vietnam, for my generation, I wouldn't particularly understand it, but I know my mother's generation, um, they hated the Vietnam War. They said the U.S. shouldn't have been there in the first place. And so you're also touching on past wounds, past generational wounds, too. So I think it's a, a very daring book, and I can't wait to get more into the book. And we are talking to Shoba Sattler. She is the author of Child of Dust, which is available on Amazon.com or wherever books are sold. Go ahead and get a copy of this today. You can go on Amazon and get it. And we're going to go ahead and take a quick short break, and we'll be right back after these messages. Don't go anywhere. More with Parker and her guests on the Right Stuff Radio Show. We'll be right back. Hi. Is your book club in need of some fresh and exciting questions to ask club members and authors at your next book club meeting? Literacations, the book conversation game, is 70 thought-provoking questions to really get into an in-depth discussion about the books you and your club members are reading. These questions really get into the characters, the storyline, and into the author's head. These questions may just give you and your book club members a whole new way to get into a new conversation, a literacation. Literacations is also a great set of tools for bloggers, interviewers, and authors to use a discussion question. Are you ready to get lit? Please visit our website at litversations.com, L-I-T-V-E-R-S-A-T-I-O-N.com. And please like our Facebook page at Simply Said Reading Accessories. Thank you. Have you read the latest issue of SORMAG Digital, the award-winning literary magazine for multicultural readers and writers? SORMAG Digital is available quarterly and showcases interviews with the best authors in multicultural literature. SORMAG Digital features craft and business articles for those interested in writing. If you're looking for a good book, check out our book reviews on what's hot in multicultural literature. For writers looking for new readers to get in front of, SORMAG Digital is the perfect place to introduce 
choose your book. We offer advertising spaces that fit your promotional budget. Get your free subscription on StoreMag.com or order a print issue on MagCloud.com. If you would like more information about StoreMag Digital, check us out on StoreMag.com or contact us at StoreMag at Yahoo.com. StoreMag Digital is the magazine for multicultural readers and writers. Hi, and welcome back to the show. You're listening to The Right Stuff here on WPJC 104.5. We are having a fantastic time talking to Shoba Sattler all the way from Australia. And we are talking about her book, Child of the Dust. It's a Christian multicultural international romance, and it's available on Amazon.com or wherever books are sold. You're going to absolutely enjoy this book because she takes a multicultural take and a, also a subtle version of the, of the gospel message into this book as well. And Shoba, once again, thank you so much for being with us on the show to discuss your work. Absolute pleasure. Thanks for having me, Parker. One thing I want to talk about before the break, you were mentioning how, you know, um, you using you like romance, but you like to add other things to it. And I think sometimes I totally understand that that uh, that thought process, because sometimes you read the romance, you're like, oh, my gosh, there's so much angst and there's so much tension. I need something else in this relationship. <laughs> you know what I mean? You kind of need something else to keep the story going. And so when you're writing Child of Dust, what was the genesis of the idea? Where did that idea come from? Uh, okay. Uh, well, you know, it just from news reports and other books that I read, you know, sometimes. Um, and I just came across this uh, this group. I call it a group of children, which I call the least remembered casualties of the Vietnam War. I mean, mm-hmm. people talk so much about the, you know, like you yourself mentioned that your, during your mother's time, whether it was right to go into the war or not, and all the other political debates that go on. But the actual result of it is there's these kids that's just like part of the relics that, you know, no mm. one thinks. So um, so I just came across articles like this, and um, usually they're like stories about how uh, an American father would go back to Vietnam looking for this child, you know, so that sort of triggered off um, the story to me, and I, from there I just, you know, decided that, well, it would be interesting to have uh, the main character in this romance book who did have a past like that, so that's how it came to be. I like how, in touching on this issue, it's kind of showing how God doesn't forget about us. You know what I mean? That even though people can't forget about us, people can't abandon us and leave us alone and leave us to Mm. fend for ourselves. God doesn't do that. And I think that is so important in a world that is going so fast that some people feel left behind. I really think that's very important. I know for a lot of young young people, they're looking to be part of something. They're looking to be with somebody. That's why they may do stupid things or silly things in order to fit in. Even now, Mm. even though we're in the 21st century, and I can't help but see that reflection in Child of Dust. Would you say that's something that you spoke to maybe within the narrative of the book? Um, sorry, I don't understand your question, Parker. Can well, no, you repeat I'm, that? Yeah, what I'm saying is that you know how people feel abandoned and they feel left out. Yeah. And like this, like um, your main character, Brian, how he feels, he feels left out or maybe because his father abandoned him and how it's so important for us as Christians to reach out to people who may be left behind. Is that something you kind of talk about within the narrative of Child of Dust? Oh, absolutely. In fact, it, all the decisions he makes, you know, how he relates to Kim, uh, everything, uh, you, you know, it stems or it, it comes from the fact that he's, gone through this experience, you know, that which she, in her privileged life, doesn't have a clue what it's about, you know. So mm-hmm. this is, it, it definitely reflects that. And like what you say, if I could, uh, I'll be permitted to just go back a little bit about what we meant, talked about earlier and how Christian books in the past did never relate, to, you know, to these things. And so how can we reach out to them if we don't talk about these issues or we don't talk about like passion in romance and it's just you know then they people would think that it's just not real i mean christian books just don't relate to life <laughs> as we know it i 
I find it fascinating, Shoba, how um, we, we take about this topic, how so many other things come to mind as I listen to this topic about this. So how have readers responded to Child of Dust? Yes, that's very interesting, really, because, um, I mean, it, the reviews are, so far I've got all good reviews, you know, because I think it's, um, I have so many different, I, don't, I wouldn't say subplots, but a lot of suspense in the book, like you, you want to just keep turning the pages because there's new things happening and mm -hmm. uh, new circumstances and dilemmas, and um, which, you know, all leading to the goal that these two main characters are reaching for. But the mm -hmm. thing is, uh, I've had a couple of maybe reviewers who are used to reading Amish books, <laughs> so that was quite interesting. <laughs> they they said uh, there was the passion was uh, a bit like uh, a bit much in some places, but of course you know it's all within the within the boundaries and the Christian um, you know boundaries. But mm -hmm. they 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 both of them said that they would read another one of my books, and they would they said that it was it was interesting. They couldn't put it down. So um, it it's. It's nice to <laughs> nice to be able to reach out to someone who's had you no know, experience reading a Christian book that's a bit more daring, and then finding that they, you know, might actually think that this, this, there's something here in this book, and it keeps their sorry holds their interest. You know, it's interesting that you mentioned about the passion between the characters, and this is something I gotta say this within a lot of other cultures. Sex and intimacy is something that you talk about. It's something that happens, you know. Some, sometimes with um, certain confines, like if you have everyone who lives in the house, chances are someone's being intimate in the, in the house somewhere, you know, in certain cultures. <laughs> I know. And so sex and, and intimacy is, they may not talk about it all the time, but it's not so hidden and so spiritualized that you can't talk about it, you know. And so I think yeah. having that burst of passion, whatever it is, you know, you may keep it within a certain confined boundary. I don't think it can be graphic, you know. But any of you are, I've read books that, ha Christian books who've had that too, and, and it, it didn't bother me. Maybe because I've read hotter stuff, you know what I mean? <laughs> so it didn't bother me. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> you know, uh, and I like that because a lot of the, some of the Asian cultures, especially, they're very open about and open and frank about that. And to not be open and frank about it is not to accurately capture that culture's idea about intimacy, you know what I mean, or about anything. It could be about smoking or, or whatever. It, you don't capture that because they are open about these topics. And do you think maybe one of the reasons why people are reaching for more realistic stories that we're tired of keeping it under wraps? Absolutely, you know, it's just um, how, how do I say it? it's um, it's but coming back to the fact that it's not real. People can't can relate can relate to something like you know as you build characters, you've got to make those characters real, or mm -hmm. people would just not in that story. It'd just be some la la land which no one can relate to, you know. Mm -hmm. So um, I I think yeah as as you said, Parker, that it's uh, it's important to keep it real. So, and, and <laughs> why do we sometimes go through all of these difficulties, or even go through you know, like uh, go through all these difficulties in life, so that we can reach out to others who have who are going through the same thing, and rather than pretend we are some self righteous person who has never had you know a, never had a like a bad run in their lives and and just we can't relate to anybody else who who is going through that and how do we reach out to them? So yeah. It was interesting though that this lady who got me back into writing this fan, she's not a Christian, but um she she found the book she actually read the book over and over. <laughs> I was wondering why would you read a book? <laughs> I mean I can understand if it's like a self help book, but this is a fiction fiction book and she thought mm -hmm. I just had to I was reading it over and over again and so I had to ask her like can I just ask you something did the Christian element bother you at all she said no it didn't bother me at all <laughs> well that's good that's real good <laughs> yeah because it means that it, it bridges your God after mm -hmm. pardon no I said okay. it means that your writing bridges the gap between the Christian and the secular world 
Uh, yes, I actually try to do that. <laughs> I try to write it in, you know, in a way that anyone could just pick up. Actually, it's true. You can pick up in the the book, and any anyone, whether it's Christian or not, you'd find it uh, interesting because of the suspense and the and you know Vietnam. And uh, for me, romance is well, it's it's more than passion. I mean, it's not all about like what happens in the bedroom. And, and right. The romance. Yes, the romance is the whole, like, you know, the, the landscape, the ambience, the, you know, the culture, the the setting. And for me, all that is part of the romance of the whole thing. And, um, yeah. <laughs> so tell me, you know, as you're writing this book, you got to love some of your characters. I know for myself as a fellow writer, there are some characters you fall in love with, some characters that you want to rip their heads off, and other characters that you kind of go like, why won't you just do what I tell you to do, you know? And so, you know, in the midst of this book, who would you say is your favorite character? My favorite character in Child of Death? Yes. Oh, uh, gosh, I, I guess I would have to say Brian. I mean, don't we all? I mean, as a romance author, Parker, don't we all just love our... We do um, love our men. We do love them. Our heroes <laughs> <in our> book. <laughs> yes. I mean, we created them. Yes. Yeah, so, <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah. And I, I, uh, yeah, it must it has to be Brian. You know, because of how he 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 relates, how the decisions he makes, and all the the different dilemmas that come up. And uh, I think I, I find it really interesting. The challenge was writing Kim because. Um, I signed some of the reviews, and they, which I thought was interesting. They said that they started off not liking Kim at all, mm-hmm. uh, which is what I was, I was aiming for. And then eventually, you know, they they liked her because she changed. Mm-hmm. So um, it's more like the Gone with the Wind, you know, but Scarlett O'Hara thing that you you don't really like her, and whereas it probably goes against all the rules of romance writing, you got to. Have like likable characters. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, <laughs> but it was just part of the transition, you know, uh, mm-hmm. showing how people change and yeah. So, well, and uh, so I think uh, for me it would be Brian. Yes. <laughs> Well, I like that because we do really relate to our characters. And I always say they're the voices in our heads screaming at us. That's why I always think about it like that. They're just voices in our heads screaming <laughs> at us. And uh, what, I really, uh, what I really want to know is, does this book lead to any other sequels or any other parts of the story that's going to be written later? Um, no, I, I don't. I don't plan on writing a sequel for Child of Dust, um, although one of the readers did suggest that. <laughs> That mm-hmm. I should have one like 15 years later, you know. Um, but um, I do have another book that I'm working on that would be part of a sequel. Um, sequels weren't very popular back then. <laughs> again, I have to relate to the time that uh, I, you know, I'm writing again after like a decade. So I've mm-hmm. noticed that this it's very popular now. Um, but that's not the reason that I'm writing it. It's just that I think um, with the second novel, that which is a work in progress, it just has so much to it that it sort of spills into like a second, you know, book. In a if there is a third, that I might write a third. But as for Child of Dust, it's, it's a standalone book, and mm-hmm. I don't plan on having, uh, a sequel to it. No, not at all. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. I mean, I understand because I think sequels um, are pretty good. People like series and sequels now. But I did hear, too, that some people are starting to want to get away from the sequels because some authors have, like, this, you know, 14-book 14, 14 sequel chapters and stuff. Like, I get it. I get it. It's a lot more here. You know, because they want you to invest into the world or the characters or the drama, whatever that is. But so standalone books work, too, I believe. So, you know, you're sitting here, you're writing after being stopped writing for a long time and things of that nature. So what are some of the things that you see happening for yourself in the next couple of years? Do you see yourself with more books out there? What do you plan on doing? What's some of your other projects you have working on? Uh, yeah, well, um, I yeah do plan to write more books, um, but I'm just, I feel like I'm not – because I also um, – run a healthy food website so I'm very passionate about food and um, natural cooking so I wouldn't say um, writing books is 
what I do per se, like, and nothing else. So it's, huh? I have to divide my time between the two. So I hope to write more books as the as the Lord leads. <laughs> but mm-hmm. it's um, it's just that I don't I don't know about uh, what's this going to say? I don't know about writing you know like three books a year i don't have a goal like that like i don't have a okay. schedule i just write as and when i get the inspiration so that's all that's on my uh plate at the moment so other than this uh, i have the second book that i'm working on and uh i also write a lot of short stories and uh mm-hmm. enter them into some contests and uh write articles for other mm-hmm. magazines so that's um that's that's what I do at the moment. Well, I think that's uh, admirable, especially since you have other things that you're doing. Tell us a little about your uh, uh, natural cooking. What's that all about? Oh, uh, well, uh, we well, this is a lifestyle farm, so we just you know we don't like sell produce or anything, but we uh, grow our own food, and mm-hmm. uh, I basically make a lot of things from scratch. So um, you know, kefir, which is really good for the gut, gut health and uh so I, it's really interesting i <laughs> just um basically learn a lot about the nutrition of food and how you uh how you feed your body with uh things that benefit your body you know instead of um, just anything so um that's what it's about and i and it's, it's been interesting because uh, we grow all of these things like i'm looking at a moringa tree right in front of me as I speak to you. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, moringa, and moringa is uh, quite uh, moringa is quite popular in the health food stores now. Whereas when mm-hmm. I was growing up, my grandmother had a tree, and uh, you know we didn't think much of it. Uh, but yes, yeah, so things like that. So that's the other side of what I I mean my other occupation <laughs> that takes my time. Well, nothing wrong with that. I really, uh, I really like to hear about stuff like that because I do understand, you know, so many of our foods, especially in the West, is very processed and packaged and lots of things. And then the numerous theories that come about for why we have so many ill ailments and mental disorders and all this kind of stuff is from the food. So I really like to uh, showcase that. So I'm glad that you're picking up that banner as well and doing that as well. And what we're going to do is take a quick short break. And when we come back, we'll have our final thoughts with Shoba Sattler, author of the book Child of Dust. We'll be back in just a few moments. Don't go anywhere. More with Parker and her guest on the Right Stuff Radio Show. We'll be right back. Engaging the culture's imagination through speculative fiction, the Untold Podcast produces audio fiction from a Christian worldview. Find us over at untoldpodcast.com, where we partner with authors to tell science fiction, fantasy, supernatural, and horror stories. Find links at untoldpodcast.com to subscribe via iTunes, Stitcher, and a variety of other platforms. Each month we produce high-quality audio fiction that's free to download and free to listen. Our submissions are open, and we're always looking to add another great story to over 24 hours of narrative entertainment. Find all of our audio fiction over at www.untoldpodcast.com. Autism affects 1 in 68 children, sweeping all racial, ethnic, and socioeconomic groups. Autism is a lifelong brain disorder that leads to untold challenges to the physical, financial, and social well-being of people with autism and their families. Resources are stretched thin. The Autism Alliance of Michigan, a collective voice for families across the entire state, uses resources to help families battle challenges right here, right now. If you or anyone you know needs help navigating the autism journey, contact the Autism Alliance of Michigan today, 877-463-AAOM, or visit them online at aaomi.org. Hi, and welcome back. We are just having a fun time talking to Shoba Sattler. She is the author of the book Child of Dust, which is available on Amazon.com or wherever books are sold. It's a wonderful Christian, multicultural, international romance story. You definitely want to get a copy of this. You will not be disappointed. And Shoba, once again, thanks for being with me on the show. It's been such a pleasure talking to you from, as we say, down under. And looking forward to uh, your books and more stuff that you're doing there. But I got to ask, you know, um, where can we find you online for people who want to get in touch with you? Yeah, uh, I've got a website, shobasadler.com. 
and uh, I've also got a Facebook page that's uh, Facebook and then you know dot com slash Sherba sorry author Sherba Sadler mm-hmm. um, and that's about it. You know, of course, you they all have a Google account and you can just Google me under Sherba Sadler. So um, yeah, those are the social media links. One thing that this show is always about, Shelva, it's always about encouraging those authors who God has given the gift to write to pick up the pen and write. So in a few moments that we have left, go ahead and encourage those authors out there today. Sure. Uh, I would say uh, they have, it's, you know, there's such a lot of opportunity right now at this moment uh, for writers and, you know, whether it's traditional publishing or self-publishing because back then the only way to go was traditional publishing and uh, I think that as the Lord leads as God guides you to put uh, your thoughts down on paper whether it's uh, fiction or non-fiction he will direct you so it, it, there is there should be no strife really it should just come naturally and I think that when that happens just um, just trust the Lord and I know marketing can be an, an overwhelming um, overwhelming concept for a lot of writers and I would say just don't uh, do your marketing but don't get overwhelmed by it just focus more on your writing and if your writing is good it will naturally market itself the book will market itself so just uh, focus on writing and don't uh, focus on writing and and focus on listening to what the where the where God is leading and and how you should um, yeah yeah how how you should formulate your book and at the same time there's lots of help out there uh, just unimaginable there's just so many for for editing for uh, you know publishing and I've I've heard some of uh, the ads that you have on your show Parker that's just amazing uh, across. Crossover Alliance, so there's and another publisher that sounds very interesting, and um, and what you're doing is great. Thank you so much for showcasing all of the, all of the authors out there, and um, I would just say that just do that. Just focus on the best possible work you could get out there, and um, then naturally things will happen. Shoba, thank you so much for those kind words. You know, I really do feel this is where the Lord has me at, and it's interesting. And I, I say this all the time on the show. You know, I never saw myself here. All I wanted to do was write. That's all I wanted to do. And the Lord has allowed me to crew, have a platform for authors, for Christians, worldwide authors. And here I am, four years later, talking to an author in Australia. I love it. I absolutely love it where God takes our dreams. He takes our dreams and he blows them up to beyond capacity that we cannot even fathom. We just can't fathom. It's always so humbling to me. And I want to thank you, thank you, thank you so much for being with me on the show today. Oh, pleasure, Parker, really. Um, Honestly, I had a good time. Thank you so much for having me. And we were talking today to Shoba Sadler. She is the author of the book Child of Dust, which is available on Amazon.com or wherever books are sold. So go ahead, love my sister today. Go ahead and buy a copy of Child of Dust. It is for you to pick up, and when you pick it up, you won't be disappointed. And make sure you leave a review. We authors love reviews. That's how we get feedback on our writing. That's how we learn how can I improve here or improve there, or if I'm doing great. Let me know I'm doing great. We authors love reviews. So go ahead, buy a copy of Child of Dust today, and make sure you leave a review and let my sister know how you enjoyed her book. And then just Google her name, Shoba Sattler, on Google, and you'll find her on many different social media sites. And it's just going to be a wonderful, wonderful interaction with you and her as you read her book, Child of Dust. One thing I want to tell you is that if God's given you the gift to write, like Shoba said, go ahead and write. Go ahead and focus on that. I know for a lot of writers out there, it's so hard to focus because you have family, you have work, you have school, you have other commitments. But when you focus, just concentrate on writing the best book you possibly can. That's what Shoba said. She said, your writing will be your marketing. And marketing is such a daunting monster that we all have to deal with, myself included. Most of us don't like to market, and the days have gone by where the publishers were marketed for you. Nowadays, 
even if you have a publisher, they want you to do your own marketing. And so, you know, go ahead and just focus on writing the best, best book possible as well as doing as much as you possibly can to hone your writing skills. And that's the, one of the best advice that Shelba has given to us today on the show. Thank you for joining me for this edition of The Right Stuff. I'm the queen of Tuesday nights, Parker J, and you have a wonderful, absolutely glorious, blessed day. Thank you for joining us for this edition of The Right Stuff. Follow Parker online at parkerjcole.com. To hear this show and other shows, visit the show archive at therightstuffradio.wordpress.com. We'll be back same time next week, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Make your mattress totally you during the Labor Day sale, now at Value City Furniture. Shop the latest mattress styles from Serta and Beautyrest, and take a simple rest test with one of our certified sleep experts to find your perfect mattress. Plus, this week at Value City Furniture, save up to 400 bucks off select mattresses, plus free box springs, pillows, and more with qualifying purchases, and free delivery plus 36 months no interest financing with your Value Plus credit card on mattress purchases $9.99 and up, only at Value City Furniture. Financing subject to credit approval. See store for details. Experience a new way to shop at Value City Furniture. With made-to-mix furniture, you can now easily mix and unmatch styles to create a space that's totally you. So long, Matchy Matchy. It's time to mix it up and make it you. And now, hurry to Value City Furniture for our Labor Day sale and get free delivery plus 36 months no interest financing on your Value Plus credit card when you spend $19.99 and up. Plus, shop this week and save big on select bedrooms, dining rooms, reclining groups, and more during the Labor Day sale at Value City Furniture. Financing subject to credit approval. See store for details.